energy powers everything we do. How it's generated, how it's consumed, what the costs are, big topics right now. We're going to help you figure out how you can help your customers reduce their carbon footprint and save money. We're even going to have a peak energy van and all of that starts right now. Welcome to Chicago. Welcome to Oracle Industry Lab. I'm your Oracle TV host and head of Oracle Industry Labs, Burchin Kaplanolo. We're going to talk about energy today. Let's start with this. Although the future is not cast in stone, we know that people want to reduce their energy consumption. We also know that actions taken today has an impact to the future. Let me give you an example. In 2021, Customers participating in energy efficiency programs were able to reduce more than 30 million metric tons of carbon emissions. That is equal to five years of greenhouse emissions for Washington, D.C. I'm going to let that sink in for a second. What about future? Oracle and Bradle Group did research, and they found out that actions taken from now till year 2040 can have two times more impact than the energy supply itself. And one of the main reasons is, Changing the energy supply is taking time, like infrastructure investment, all these changes. What we're going to do is we're going to look into how can you help your customers reduce their carbon emissions and save money. And to do that, we're going to use innovation, technology, and industry expertise. We're going to get into that. First, we're going to have Gina Science walk you to this smart studio behind me. Then we're going to have Tim Webster who is an expert in innovation and information technology, join us. We're going to talk about how relevant it is what you experience. Before we get started, I want to remind all of you, please comment, like, engage, subscribe, ask questions, tell us where you're from. We want to hear from you. We had amazing engagement last time, and we want to do the same thing. Behind me is the smart studio. We build this as our test bed. It is not a demo center, because we wanted to try technologies. We also know every customer has different drivers for sustainability and affordability. They know there are many different types of customers out there. We also know technology is changing. There are parts and pieces. So what we did is we actually built this environment to simulate so we can actually do some trials and tests. Earlier today, we recorded a segment with Gina Science, and she talked about how we collect data. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Gina Simes, Senior Program Manager for the Oracle Industry Lab here in Chicago. Welcome to the Smart Studio. We have many uh, partners within our greater ecosystem, including Samsung SmartThings, which allows you to monitor multiple devices from your home remotely, including our oven and our oven vent. Both of these appliances are connected, which allows us to connect all the data. Our refrigerator is also connected and includes several different retail applications. We use the touchscreen to run Oracle's OPower application, delivering personalized insights on behalf of the utility in support of energy efficiency, affordability, and peak demand challenges that we might face. With the multiple applications here, we're experimenting with a unified data hub, which allows us to collect all of the data into one place, and also working with third parties to take key actions. We're now going to take a look at the back of the Smart Studio. This is our connected water heater, controllable Samsung washer and dryer, Tesla power wall, and we even have solar panels on the roof to energize our building. Each of these devices allows us to collect the data as well as enhance end user experiences. Continuing with the end user experience, we can also monitor and control energy use of the smart studio lighting by running a variety of different scenarios, including turning on and off the lights, replacing light bulbs with LEDs, as well as evaluating sensors within the lights to monitor occupancy. The fireplace serves as our proxy for heating, cooling the home. This demonstrates real energy usage with our partner eGage. Above the fireplace, the eGage application is displaying the fireplace usage. What's great is that this dashboard can also showcase all energy usage of all the appliances within the Smart Studio. So as you can see, we have many of the key energy appliances that our customers use every day. And although our devices are relatively advanced, the use cases that we explore are focused on the engagement across all types of customers. 
We focus on specific scenarios related to affordability, sustainability, and convenience to ensure we're covering off on all aspects. So why does all of this matter? Hint, hint, it's all about what you do with the data. Thanks, Gina. That was awesome walkthrough. Orkut's all-powered platform has been leading customer engagement in utility space over a decade. The platform used data science and behavior science to make recommendations and help us reduce energy. By doing that, the platform helps to save over 35 terawatt hours of energy. That equates to 5 million cars off the road for a year. Let me show you how. Here are the recommendations. It will actually show me how I'm doing and what my community is doing. So I live in Chicago, and at some point I lived in a building with window units, which the performance was not great. And all power platform was actually showing me how I was doing compared to my neighbors. Well, now I live in a forced air building with smart thermostats, so it's really managing the energy consumption and the results look great. Also, it can allow you to sign up to energy saving programs. Or let's say you bought another new electric vehicle. It actually recognizes that based on your energy signature, and it will make you recommendations about when is the best time to actually charge your vehicle. And electric vehicles are a hot topic. These are you know, big um, you know, impact to our day-to-day -day lives. So it is really important to adapt and adjust to the new technologies. So if you look at all this, one more number I actually want to throw it out there. The platform was able to help us save over $3.3 billion. That is a massive amount. It's because it makes recommendations. It helps us to actually make some behavior changes. This is all affordability and sustainability all in one. Next, I actually want to talk about a different use case, an peak energy event. When the supply is less than the demand, what happens is utility companies, energy companies want us to participate in these energy events. What that does is it's asking us to stop using energy. Look, I just got a text message. There is a peak energy event. We're just simulating that. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to press this button and turn off the dryer. I could also walk behind this wall and turn it off myself. Utility companies reward you for participating to these kinds of events. And you can actually find out how you did. OK, Google, how did I do during yesterday's peak event? You did great. For the peak event yesterday, you earned $5 for saving 5 kilowatt hours in energy during the peak event. To better understand your energy usage patterns, you can review your energy usage for the past year by heading over to your Samsung fridge. You'll be able to see your disaggregated energy usage and see what your top three energy usage categories are. So what it did, it actually told me to go back to the fridge and look at that information. Well, I can also do that by using my iPad or my phone, or I can do this remotely. I can access this information over the internet for wherever I am. This is making us active participants of whether your choices for affordability and sustainability in energy, but also for peak events. We're no longer just bill payers, right? You are actually participating in this. And that's really important because we also have been looking in the space how to automate this process because you have busy lives, right? You might not necessarily want to get off your couch and walk to the dryer and turn it off. So we're looking at technologies, how we can automate that with some sort of smart things, Oracle Platform, and other third-party applications to actually do it all together. We are also aware that not everybody is going to have these kinds of technologies. So we're looking at to bring platform that actually will enable some of automation and some not. I'm going to walk, and I'm going to meet with Tim Webster, who is an expert on innovation and information technology from Exelon a way you told the company, and we're going to have a conversation about how relevant it is what you just experienced. Hi, Tim. Hi, Virgin. Let's have a seat. Hey, thanks for having me here today. And thanks for joining us. It's exciting to be on Oracle TV. We are here to talk about energy, and actually we were able to show a lot of different technologies earlier. So question to you is, 
going to be about how these things are relevant, you know, what you do day to day. But before we start with that, I want to ask about a little bit about you and Exelon, and then we'll just go deeper into it. Great. No, thanks. Um, yeah, I've been with Exelon for 26 years. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, I know that's <laughs> kind of unusual in this, in this market these days, but uh, it's a fascinating company. Uh, we have six utilities that serve the uh, Chicago, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. area and all the surrounding areas, 10.5 million customers, gas and electric. Um, and we pride ourselves at Exelon, and I feel like a, big, I feel like a part of that, of, of connecting our customers back to a sustainable grid, cleaner, smarter, and it's complicated. The grid, people just generally take it for granted, just the complexity of it. Um, and hopefully we'll get to talk a little bit more today about customer experiences, the journeys people are on, as far as my actual role, I'm a director of architecture uh, in IT, and so, and I've also been very involved with the Exelon Innovation Program, um, and it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a constant learning process as new technologies come uh, and opportunities for us to use technology in a way that adds value to our employees, to our customers. Uh, it's just a constant learning experience, which I feel is what innovation is truly about. Um, so yeah, just many things we're going to hopefully talk about today. And let's start with challenges. What challenges are utility companies are facing today? Okay, so the, the most common utility challenge is that nobody thinks about their utility until something, <laughs> something unplanned happens, right? Until a storm comes through and knocks out your power, um, or you get an unexpected high bill in the middle of the summer. Um, and are those the top two? They're the most common reason somebody thinks I got to go contact my utility, right? Yep. Or I want to talk to somebody and understand this better. Um, but the storm, we understand that very well. Like how, like it's been a lot of analysis and a lot of listening to customers and their feedback about how they want to be treated and, and what that experience should be like during a storm situation. Storms are not getting, you know, calmer. Storms are going to be worse in the future, right? With climate change and so forth. Um, and so, we know that customers want to know when they could get on with their lives, like when they could plan to be well, the plan to be restored. Like, do I have to take the food out of my freezer, that kind yep. of thing, or do I need to get a hotel? So we we learned that um, telling, helping them learn, or helping them be able to plan to get on with their lives is like step one. Restoring the power is the next obvious step. And there's so much new technology that we've put into the grid that we work within the grid that helps bring people up faster and get back, to, get back to their lives. Now, when it comes to high bill, that's a tricky one because everybody's situation is different, right? And, and um, it really depends on what type of building that you're in, how old is that building? Um, you're, honestly, so many different things uh, can, can combine to add to a high bill situation. But when you call like one of our customer service representatives, they could talk you through that. But we, to get to that next level of sophistication, we really need to be an energy or an energy advisor to our customers. And um, that's an exciting opportunity. So it's a challenge, but it's really, it's really like where I think our, the utility industry is going, is to be that trusted energy advisor. Now, that brings up the next question. How do you get the customers more engaged? Well, obviously, we don't want them to wait until there's a storm or a bill <laughs> that they're upset with, right? Um, it's you know, looking for these, these key moments, I think, where there's, an, there's a reason for them to even care. Um, and I feel like it's um, being there for them at that time. Like, so if you're, I get asked all the time, should I put solar panels on my house? I'm like, well, it depends. That might not be the first thing you want to do, but that, you know, we'll help you with that. Um, yep. We'll help you. Should I buy that EV? Does it make sense? And there's all sorts of different dimensions. Do of customers it. call the utility company ask these questions? They they do increasingly they do, um, and uh, and also we have a great like great websites right, and that's common for almost every utility in, in the the country to have information for our customers to make good decisions around energy choices. I just think Exelons are the best when it comes to that. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> help people through. Should I buy that EV for an efficiency play or because EVs are actually just really cool right now, uh, you know? and from a sustainability point of view. Um, but, but yes, they're asking us these kind of questions. How do we, how do we be more efficient at home or work? And um, we have energy advisor services, we have home audits. It's like, probably, it's like a no-brainer to do a home energy audit and to sign up for that. You will find- Who that, does the audit? 
Uh, actually, we have, there's an online version of it, and then you can also set up and schedule. Each utility, again, six utilities at Exelon, they do it slightly differently, but it's, um, the service is customized to, the, to that um, you know, uh, community as to the best way to do it. That ties to, I mean, I'm hearing you say there are different types of customers. I mentioned that earlier, too. Um, you know, how would you describe that? Like, what are the drivers for different customers for make chain, to, right. to make a change? You, you know, utility, so if we're talking utility customers, utilities are already a strange animal in terms of type of business model. Uh, you know, we're not making a quick buck off of somebody, right? We're, we're here for the long haul. Yeah. So uh, we think about uh, customers as being, like think of a, a residential customer and any stage of their life, right? Start with that. We also have large customers that are like smelting aluminum, like a very different profile. Yep. Right, and then it's not just individuals or individual companies. We also think about our customers as being a you know a, a group of people in a community, and we think of them as being like a whole you know city town village uh, kind of. Exp they have a way of interacting with us as well. Yep, we're a highly regulated industry, right? And we don't set the price of power. Our own product, we don't even set the price of that, right? So, it's complex. So every, every type of customer has every type of, have many types of journeys that they go through. So there's a lot of um, variation there to think about. And we serve everyone equally. That's another model of a utility is that we don't single individuals out. You get, you get the service, right? So um, yeah, it's, there's a lot of diversity there in terms of both, like, even if you just like zero in on an individual yep. and we think, okay, just stages of life. Like when you're, you're a kid, this is a great time to learn about energy. Like when you're going through school and you're, you're learning about what is sustainability, what's it mean to turn the lights off and so forth. You know, you, if you're a kid right now and, or you have a kid and you still see incandescent bulbs in your home, you ought to be yelling at your parents, right? Well, I, I, I will share a personal uh example so uh, I went to my kids school and they had an exhibition and it was fascinating to see I want to say 30 40 percent of the exhibits kid did has to do with energy saving um, it was I think that's at you know top of mind the new generation cares about it they want to reduce energy consumption um, it's actually you know really interesting to see that one other question I want to ask is so you're, you know, you work for a utility company, but we're also seeing there are a lot of other companies coming into the space. You know, the car manufacturers, they can, you know, batteries and others are bringing new technologies that are actually coming into this space. And your customers are hearing a lot of different messages. So how do they go through that? What's the best method to actually figure that out? I, I feel like it's similar to the you might just be in a box store and someone's asking you or selling you a solar panel on, on your home and you were thinking, is that, the right, is that the right choice for me? And it's not an easy thing to answer, but um, every individual customer has, has their profile, has their story, has their point in life, right? Where um, maybe it does make sense to get that solar panel, for example, if, you are, uh, if you're gonna be in that house for 20 years, that might be a really good investment yep. and will pay off for you. Um, but, but yeah, there's a lot of different market participants, and that's a good thing. Utilities are sort of the foundation of the energy market. We're, again, we're gonna we're st kind of stick around and um, we connect the dots to a lot of these different um, you know, business opportunities. I don't see any conflict with that. Like it's an open playing field and we just make sure that people are safe. We make sure that the grid is efficient and reliable. Yep. Those are our priorities, right? And then our communities are served fairly, and, and that's, that's incredibly important. And we talked a lot of different technologies. So earlier you mentioned electric vehicles. Um, I, we had that segment we talked about appliances and other pieces. You know, solar panels you mentioned. So these are you know, technologies that are coming into our lives. Which ones you're most excited about? It's, it's easy to get excited about a lot of these, right? I'm, I am excited about solar and that, that possibility. There's one of these technologies I feel that doesn't get enough attention, and it's heat pumps. Heat pumps. And heat pumps are, are, have been around for a long time, but they've, they were always more used in like a southern climates where you had a lot of heat uh, and in, in the winter months. So right now, if you might, you have a natural gas, if you live in the northern side of the United States or northern climates, you're, you might have a, you know, a electric water heater, I'm sorry, you might have a gas water heater or a gas furnace, and that makes sense it used to make sense more 
just because of the efficiency of, of burning gas in that, in that situation. But heat pumps are now bridging the gap. The technology has improved to the point where from a, from a heating point of view, if you were using baseboard like floor heating, this could save you 50% of your total energy, electricity consumption in, in the winter yep. to use a heat pump. And all it's doing, you can't really move cold around, by the way. You can only move heat, heat around, right? right? Yeah. So you, even in the dead of winter, there is heat to be pulled from the outside environment and pulled into your so house. So it's underground heat pumping and actually using it to heat the house, isn't it? So, that, so there are three kinds of heat pumps. There, there's a geothermal, where it's like yeah. ground sink, and then there's uh, water, and there's air. And air is definitely the most common kind. And I would say the technology around air heat pumps. So they're, you've probably seen them inside of people's houses now. They're, they tend to be more modular. So yeah. they're, they stand up right. And they're, sometimes if they have a larger home, you have two of these units on the outside. But in, you know, obviously in the winter, you're pulling the heat from outside and heating the inside of your home. And in, in, the, in the summer, it's the opposite effect. You're pulling the heat out the other direction. So you're cooling. Absolutely. And, and also heat pumps are way more efficient at dehumidifying than traditional air conditioners are. So, Which is a major issue. <laughs> totally. Like, yeah. it, that totally makes the whole energy consumption. Because if you're comfortable, you're not cranking that, yep. that cooling down. So I, I really am excited about that. And the technology has advanced to the point where it is now very attractive. But again, it's the, the problem is being an energy advisor to someone that says, should I get a heat pump? Well, it depends on your building. Like, you might do better with some new windows. Yep. You might do better with just making, doing that energy audit and making sure that everything's sealed off properly. I think the key here is you mentioned the energy audit. Now we're hearing, you know, I heard you mention several times in different words, collaboration, right? So you're talking about collaborating with your customers, collaborating with other industry. Um, is this the new way of working? Like this is the new way of engaging for utilities? Uh, utilities, again, it have to be that, that base level foundation and we're not likely to build a heat pump, for example. Yes. So partnering with, with companies that are building this new technology and advancing it is kind of like the, the normal way of working. I, I, think, I think you're right. Um, and, and trying to figure out which, like what works for a customer, like what interactions, it's not just about the technology, it's how do we engage customers effectively so that they're at a point of interest and they're ready to learn and they, they care about talking and having this conversation. Yep. You could easily misfire on all these things, right? You could try to just flood somebody with information on heat pumps. And now I'm like, I don't care about heat pumps. Yeah. So getting that at the right time is we need to collaborate with our, with our partners, but also to prototype and like to try those interactions out, see what works in reality. You know, I feel like that's a, that's a common theme with any innovation. And Exelon has been uh, one of the most committed partners at the lab. We've been doing work together. We actually have... Um, poles outside that are laying on the yard right now provided by Exelon. So this is about collaboration, this is about working together. How would you encourage others to do the same? I think just get get started. You know, it's one of these things like don't over plan, don't don't try to think through everything. Get a, get together with work with Oracle, work with, you know, in in a lab space and say let's get this this technology in front of people. Let's try it out. If we run into a a wall unexpectedly that's a learning right yep. like you know, we might find that it's not easy to move the move the pole around or to track a, a piece of information that we didn't realize we needed so fail fast right i think is the way to do it um and i think i am always i'm impressed with oracle space and just what's capable what we're capable of trying out in the real world here because there's so many opportunities to learn and then to adjust our plan before we get in front of customers with something that looks like a professional product. And right? that's what we did. So we have a simulated environment. We can bring technologies. We can we work with customers and partners and try them out. Like you said, we fail, we learn, we improve, we adjust. Eventually, it's working. So one of the things I have learned running the lab for, for these years is it still 80-20 rule applies. A lot of things we can catch by simulating the environment, I would say 80%, but there's still going to be things that you are never going to be able to catch them until you scale, until you put in multiple sites, multiple locations. But even that, like 80%, saves a lot of time, money, and effort. And one other angle, Tim, is it actually made people believing on the technology because you're trying it, you're showcasing it, you're failing, you're learning from it. So it's not like, hey, look at the whiteboard. This is what it is, or some PowerPoint slide. <laughs> it's amazing what you can learn with like a piece of cardboard in your hand and say, well, what do you think of this? Does this work? Yep. And they're like, no, that, okay, let me change it. Yep. Not, not a lot of investment. Yep. Um, my last question is, look, we talked about 
um, energy audits. I think that was quite interesting. Is that what you would recommend for the audiences to actually, is that the starting point you would see? I would say first, search your local utilities website and yep. look for energy efficiency opportunities. Almost all of them have an audit service, whether it's online or in person that you could sign up for. And you're gonna find things. Like you may find that that air conditioner that's been sitting there for 20 years, you've got an opportunity to save money and it's gonna have a quick payback, that kind of thing. Um, I would say definitely, um, yeah, engage your utility when you're making a life choice and think about like, cause you buy that new house or you build that, that that new place that you're, you're trying to get to and you make the right decisions and that will pay off obviously over the over a longer period of time. Well, Tim, this has been awesome. Time flies. Um, <clears throat> actually, this just came in. We have two questions I want to ask you uh, before we wrap up this segment. So this is from Jack in Chicago. What areas do you want to see technology companies working on? I feel like when we can build standards um, and APIs and um, just use open source where it makes sense and just security is so critical these days, right? Yep. Our infrastructure, again, is so foundational to modern life, we cannot mess around with security standards. Um, so I feel like it's that, it's that collaboration um, that we need to keep pushing for that uh, the software is stable and, and you know, it, just, it just works when it needs to for our, for our customers. Well, next one is a little personal. So Liz in uh, Los Angeles asks, Tim, what is your favorite smart energy device in your home? All right, I gotta tell you, when, when the, we had this wave of like smart gadgets, I, ha I owned everything. Like, you I, do? <laughs> I owned the, like the digital lock and, and you know, the garage door opener and the, all the lights are in my house are automated. And I, got, I geeked out on that big time when uh, it first LED, came through. LED, I'm assuming, oh right? Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely my mission. If I ever see an incandescent light bulb, I'm going, oh, what? what are you doing? Like, there's, <laughs> like trying to make that business case to your whole family. Like, I know that the so light still that? works. Did you do that Oh, I, I spent, yes. I, I did it very early compared to others in my family, right? And I'm like, this is going to pay off in like a year, maybe even then. And now it's like no brainer. You would never, you can't even buy one anymore. But um, I would say that with all that, the gadgetry, the thing I actually rely on the most is my automatic watering unit for my garden, right? Because it's electronic. If that thing doesn't go, so my you, tomatoes you will like literally gardening? die. You oh, yeah. like? Oh. I've got a greenhouse. I've got uh, all this. Just, yeah, everybody's got their hobbies, but yeah. um, it's amazing how much I rely on that one unit to yep. do what it needs to. So uh, it's different for everybody, right? We're complicated folks and um, it's the same story as we work with our customers, right? Just trying to understand what they, how we could help them, how we could add value. Awesome, so Tim, thank you. Thanks for joining. This has been a great conversation. i seeing that audience is also engaged. So uh, thank you, thank you, and thank you. So thanks for joining today. This has been quite amazing. We see a lot of engagement going on. If you want to watch other episodes, you can go to oracle.com slash connect. And if you want to learn about the lab, you can go to oracle.com slash innovation. It's been wonderful to have you today. It's been great to engage with you. It's been great to share some of the learnings that we found out. See you next time.